Today we're going to be talking about hours of service today and uh, we're also going to be doing some Qualcomm uh, tips as well. So today uh, I've got uh, Nuria and Colleen with me from the Log Department. Uh, I'm sure you guys all know who they are. Uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Adam Henderson. I run the orientation here. Okay. So uh, at least ask that you hold your questions till the end. We'll just we'll run through this presentation and uh, at the end if you guys have any, uh, any questions, feel free to ask us. Okay. All right. So first off, before we get into the whole hours of service thing, I want to talk about uh, a quick tip with the, when it comes to the Qualcomm. All right. So as you guys know, these Qualcomm units uh, you're using in your uh, trucks are computers. Okay. Uh, every once in a while, sometimes they will freeze up. If you haven't experienced that, uh, you will at some point. There's a real simple way to correct this issue. Okay. And, uh, again, it's something that maybe not everybody knows about, but you'll notice you've got your talk button up here and your center key. Okay, so if you ever come across when your uh, Qualcomm screen freezes up, it's not working, you can do what's called a soft reset. Okay, it's very simple. You just hold down your talk button for no more than 10 seconds. And when you release that talk button, you can hit your center key as well for no more than 10 seconds. And what's going to happen is, is the screen's going to go blank. And then when it pops back up, it'll be at the same spot that uh, it was actually frozen at, and you should be able to use it. Okay? If for some reason that doesn't work, give road maintenance a call. Um, they might be able to help you uh, in a more in-depth way to actually do a hard reset, which would involve usually um, tinkering with the computer, that kind of thing. Okay, but this is a this is a good tip um, to use if you ever have an incident where your screen freezes up like that. It's a real quick way to get you back up and running. Okay. All right, so uh, let's get right into the hours of service. Let's talk about that. All right, so our company statement: uh, Hyman is committed to operating safely and legally at all times, and commits to full compliance with the hours of service regulations in Canada and the U.S. Uh, we appreciate your effort that, uh, that you guys do when it comes to achieving this objective, okay? Please note, we always operate in Eastern Standard Time. No matter where you are in North America, your logs will always be in Eastern Standard Time, okay? Um, let's just do a quick recap before we get into the whole Qualcomm thing. We're going to talk about the difference between uh, Canada and the U.S., the hours of service, okay? And uh, Daria probably will help me out with this one here, but we'll just go through line by line. Um, if we're looking at uh, the Canadian side of things, uh, you always have to take a 10 hour break when you're in Canada. Now that 10 hour break can be split. It has to be eight hours consecutive, and that can be sleep or birth or off duty. So lines uh, three or plus, it, uh, one, one and two, okay? Uh, and then you can take your two hours later on in the day as long as they are in blocks of 30 minutes. Okay, everybody understand that? <clears throat> when you're going into the US or you're in the US, always have to take a 10 hour consecutive break. Again, lines one and two, okay? Um, we've got a maximum of 13 hour drive time per shift per day in Canada. In the US, it's only 11, okay? So there's a bit of a difference there, so be, be aware of that. Uh, Canada, we have a maximum 16 hour window. In the US, it's a 14 hour window. Now this 16 hour window, okay? Sometimes people get confused on this one. Basically what that means is, is you still have to uh, you're still confined, you should say, by the 14 hour on duty per shift, but you can extend your day to a 16 hour window as long as you take two hours off, again, lines one and two during that time. Okay, so essentially what you're doing is you can stop your clock during your shift and add time on using uh, lines one and two, you're off duty, you're sleeping. Okay, in the US, you can't really do that, you can't do that at all actually. Once your 14 hour starts, right, that's pretty much it, I would think. You can't go any more after your 14. Um, in Canada, we've got a minimum eight hours off duty between shifts, okay? In the U.S., it's 10, all right? That comes, brings us back up to this top here. We have to have that 10 hour consecutive, lines one and two off, and uh, in Canada, you can do eight and two, all right? Uh, we've got uh, two cycles in Canada, 70 and seven, 120 and 14, okay? Uh, 36 hours will reset that first cycle, 72 hours will reset the second cycle. It's important to recognize that here at Hyman, we operate on 70 and 7, okay? So we're looking at a 36-hour reset. In the U.S., there's two cycles as well. There's a 70 and 8 and a 60 and 7. Again, uh, 34 hours will reset both of those cycles, but Hyman operates on 70 and 8 days, all right? Now, if we're thinking, just jumping ahead a bit here, worst-case scenario is your 36-hour reset. Even when you're down in the U.S., you always want to take that 36-hour reset. Take that extra two hours, keeps you legal in both countries. Because at some point, you will be coming back uh, to Canada. All right? You don't want to come back to Canada, switch over to your hours, 
and all of a sudden uh, be at hours because you've only taken a 34 instead of a 36. All right. It's very important to always recognize because we're a Canadian carrier, because you guys are driving for a Canadian company, you have to maintain the Canada hours of service at all times. All right. It's very, very important. Um, <clears throat> right now, every 24 hour, or sorry, every 14 days, you have to have a 24 hour kind of like a mini reset. Okay, that's uh, a rule we have here in Canada. In the U.S., there's no mandatory off-duty time. This is a little bit different. Uh, the example I always like to give in the U.S., if you were running eight hours per day every day, you'd always be gaining time on your recap. You could technically never have to do a reset, a full 34-hour reset, if you limited your hours because you'll always be gaining that time back. But here in Canada, we have this rule that kind of puts the kibosh on that. It says every 14 days, you've got to at the very least take 24 hours off. Okay. Now most of you guys will probably be doing your resets long before you ever hit this 24 hour, 14 day rule, but you have to be aware of it, especially if you're in a team environment. Okay. Uh, right now in Canada, we have no mandatory rest break during a shift. All right. In the US, 30 minutes every eight hours. All right. So it's recommended that you take that 30 minute break um, <coughs> later on in your eight hour time, because if you take it too early, sometimes you might have to take two breaks, depending on uh, you know how much time you're using, right? So always be aware of that. Okay. Did you have anything you want to add on this, Maria? Or? No. Okay. No. Right. Thanks. Okay. So just a quick review of our duty statuses. Okay. So we've got line one, which is our off-duty time. This is time at home. Meal stops, time spent in a motel, time relaxing at a truck stop, anything like that. That's okay. Line two is your sleeper berth. Okay, again, this is any time that you're in the sleeper berth. That's when you should be on line two. All right. Uh, one thing that we like to mention here, uh, we'll talk about cash advances. If for any reason you guys have to go and do a cash advance on your card, okay? Uh, I always give the example, there was many years ago when I was driving, I was in California on a reset, um, I wasn't feeling too well, I ran in to get uh, some Tylenol or something, and uh, cash advanced my car, got my drink, came back, I was probably out of the truck for no more than 10 minutes, uh, but I forgot to switch myself back to sleeper, and again, it's, it is a false log, okay, technically I was in the truck stop, I should have been off duty, alright, it doesn't matter whether it's a minute, or 30 minutes or any time. If you're not in that secret berth, then it's technically a false log. Okay, so always keep that in mind, all right? And I heard about it from Maria when I got back, so just be, be aware of that, okay? Uh, line three is your drive time, okay? So that's any time spent uh, at the controls of commercial vehicle. Anytime you're driving, sitting in traffic, that kind of thing, okay? Your on-duty time, all right? Line four is the time you begin work or ready for work uh, until the time you're relieved from work. So you're Pre-trip, post-trips, unloading, offloading, um, inspections, DOT, MOT inspections. You've got to be on duty for that, okay? It's very, very important. Uh, drug and alcohol testing as well. If you're involved in a collision, okay, you've got to stay on duty until that gets resolved. It's very, very important. You don't want to go off duty or do anything else. You'll be in violation, okay? So be aware of that. Um, fueling, another one, very important. Always, always be on duty when you're fueling, all right? Uh, time spent clearing customs as well. Again, you don't want to go off duty while you're waiting in line. That's another false log. You're technically, you're working. You've got to be on duty. All right. Uh, the last one we've got here is the off-duty driving. This is personal use. This is what you, you guys have in front of you. There's a handout that we've actually made. It's actually a checklist for personal use. We're going to talk about that in great detail uh, in the next section of this because it's something that uh, a lot of people get confused about. So we're going to go through this uh, um, in great detail so that everybody here has a good understanding of what it means okay, and how to use it most importantly. So when it comes to the off-duty uh, driving, all right, personal use is counted as drive time, all right, so that means it can't be edited, all right, anything on here you can edit. The only thing you can't edit is your drive and your off-duty driving. Why can't we do that again? Because like I said, it's, it's counted as drive time, all right, so we can't, we can't edit that. Everything else is fair game as long as you haven't approved your logs or certified your logs. And basically, you want to make sure that when you're using your off-duty personal driving that you manually change uh, from off-duty to off-duty driving. Okay, it's one of the few things on here that you're going to actually manually change. You guys know when you start your day, you go on duty, and then when you end your day, you go off duty. That's usually the only time you're changing your status. Most of the time, when you guys start driving, after you drive 1.6 uh, kilometers or one mile, 
the system will automatically kick you up to driving. And it's the same thing when you're at the border and you shut that motor off at uh, the booth, it's gonna kick you down to line four on duty, right? But in this case, whenever you're using this, you're gonna manually go in and change it, okay? When you start, and you're gonna switch yourself back to off duty when you stop, all right? And there's important reasons for that, we'll get into that in a couple of minutes, all right? Uh, one statement we have down here is logs are kept on file for six months, all right? You need to download those copies before they are deleted. Right, so it's very, very important. When I used to drive, I would set an alert on my phone every three months. Hey Adam, heads up, go to your computer and log in, download your logs, okay? And if you guys have any trouble with that, you can go see Naria and Pauline up in the log department to be more than willing to help you with that. I always said three months, I didn't leave it till the very end in case there was computer issues or something. Uh, you know, four times a year, I looked at it that way every quarter. It's a good tip and a good habit to get into, but you wanna keep those logs for when you're doing your taxes. I'm sure we're all claiming meals, phones, that kind of thing. You gotta have proof for the government in case they audit you, all right? Okay, so let's talk about personal use, all right? This has been a bit of a hot topic. So we're going to go through this checklist. As you'll see, you've got a, a laminated card here that has everything that we've got up there. Uh, so we'll go through it line by line, okay? So, commercial vehicle driven for personal use does not need to be logged as driving under the following conditions, okay? The vehicle has been unloaded. Any trailers have been unhitched. The distance does not exceed 75 kilometers in a day, all right? And the system is actually going to calculate that electronically, all right? And if you're over, by one kilometer, what's going to happen is it's going to switch you up to uh, on-duty driving, or actually drive time. Okay, so you've got to be very careful with it. The driver is not subject to an out-of-service declaration. Okay, you can't be stuck in a scale somewhere and have uh, be out-of-service or be put out-of-service and then decide to use the truck for personal use. You can't do that, okay? Uh, off-duty driving has no commercial purpose or value, all right? By plan or coincidence. This is a very serious thing and something that, you know, a lot of guys have trouble getting their head around it. But an example of this would be moving closer to a pickup or a delivery. Got to make sure that uh, in, in any way you're not doing that, okay? Because it'll be considered a violation, all right? Uh, your tractor must have been pre-tripped within the past 24 hours on duty time, okay? So you would have had to have done a macro 37, which I'm sure everybody here knows about, we're going to talk about in a little bit, uh, and have your vehicle inspection report done on duty in the past 24 hours, okay? If you haven't done a pre-trip on duty in the past 24 hours, you're over that, you got to go on duty and do another one before you can use this, uh, uh, this, okay? Off-duty driving cannot be used to perform work-related activities, okay? This is another one that's very, very important. Fueling your tractor, uh, driving to a maintenance shop, okay? Getting work done on your tractor, none of that, that is all considered work, okay? And the whole purpose of this personal use is no work, right? So we don't want to be doing any activities uh, that have anything to do with work because it'll be considered a violation, all right? Um, again, using off-duty driving to position yourself closer to your next dispatch is also another violation. Nothing, a big no-no, you can't do that, okay? Because again, it's considered work, right? Um, off-duty driving cannot be used if you're getting paid an empty move, okay? That's another thing. So even if you are bobtail, if your dispatcher is paying you to move from point A to point B, again, it's considered work. You're being paid, all right? So your personal conveyance, your personal use is not going to be applicable. It will be a violation. Be very careful with that, okay? Uh, you don't want to use off-duty driving if you run out of hours, okay? This is another one that we see a huge problem with, all right, is that guys, uh, they'll get stuck somewhere, they'll be running out of hours, they switch to personal use because they don't want their Qualcomm squawking at them saying, oh, you're out of hours, find a safe place. So they'll switch to personal use with a trailer, which is a big no-no, all right? Um, you, you just can't do that. That's something that's extremely prohibited. If for some reason you guys are looking for a safe haven, um, just continue driving regular, let your hours run out, okay? And you've got two of the log ladies here that will confirm exactly what I'm saying. Uh, that's okay, that's more of a legal log than you switching over to personal use and, and, and because it's still work, right? So it's, it's a violation. Um, so you wanna make sure that, again, if you get stuck because of an accident, uh, snowstorm, anything like that, you can't get to your safe haven before your 14 runs out. Okay, again, stay on duty until you can get to your quickest safe haven. Shut down as safely and as quickly as possible, all right? And, uh, and make sure that you leave a note on your, on your logs, let your dispatcher know, give the ladies a call, all right? Let them know, tell them what the situation is, all right? Uh, much rather see you do that than falsify a log using personal use or, or any other thing. 
So yeah, so again, you've got your checklist here. Again, this is a good thing to refer to, okay? And if, if it's if it's during business hours and you're not sure, give them a call. They'll answer the phone, they'll, they'll, they'll double check, they'll make sure, uh, you know, that's what we're here for, right? Okay? All right. So just a quick, to show you guys how to use this personal, or the soft duty personal use, okay? All right, so you'll see here, this is what our Qualcomm looks like. When you're off duty, you wanna switch yourself to off duty driving at the beginning of, uh, of your time. Okay, all right, it's very, very important to switch yourself off duty driving, go to wherever it is you're going, and then when you uh, um, get to your destination, again, switch yourself back to off duty, all right? It'll stop that, uh, stop that clock, all right? Again, it's very manual when you have to do the off duty driving, but it's important that you follow this, all right, to stay in compliance, okay? Now, one other uh, tip that we'll talk about with the personal use, okay? We talked about the 24 hour uh, pre-trip rule, if you guys are taking a reset down in the U.S. or on the road or wherever, it's always a good idea at the very end of your day to do another pre-trip, okay? Before you shut down, do another macro 37, okay? I know you did one in the day, but do another one at the end of your day. That will give you 24 hours into that 36 that you can use that personal use, okay? All you mean All right. is Yeah, it's going to give you that extra time as opposed to like if you just took your pre-trip in the day, then you've already eaten through, you know, however many hours you ran that day. Right? So it's a good thing to keep in mind. All right. And honestly, between like that, I would say that's the best time to use your personal use. When you're on a reset and you're on the road and you're bobtail and you're meeting these conditions, uh, you know, to run over to Walmart or wherever to get yourself uh, stocked up, that's the best time to, to, to use this. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about pre trip inspections. Okay. Uh, pre trip inspections, as we all know, are important. Uh, part of overall safety uh, of an operation of a commercial vehicle, okay? So correct pre-trip, the idea is to identify defects before they happen, before they get out there on the road uh, to keep everybody safe, all right? So what we're essentially doing is we are um, assessing the regulatory and safety requirements issued by Transport Canada and uh, the U.S. Uh, Department of Transportation, the DOT. Okay, we wanna make sure that we're in compliance and uh, that we're meeting the regulations, all right? The big part of this is our Schedule 1. Everybody should know what a Schedule 1 is. It's how we identify major and minor defects, and everybody here should know how to do that, okay? So when you're looking at your Schedule 1, if you can distinguish between minor and majors, majors means you're literally dead in the water. You have to get your tractor or trailer fixed before you uh, decide to start rolling, okay? So examples of this would be, you know, flat tire, brake lights not working, that kind of thing. Um, your minors would be small defects, again, that you could get fixed in 24 hours. So let's say a clearance light isn't working, uh, something small like that, um, you know, and you, you way you distinguish between the two, uh, your majors will have an M beside them on your Schedule 1, whereas your minors will just be a number, okay? All right? Again, it's your responsibility to ensure that your equipment uh, is uh, safe and legal for the road, okay? Just hang on one second. So this is what it looks like here, okay? So again, you can see, you guys should all should have a copy of this. There's also a legal requirement for you guys yeah, to have one of these, yeah. right? You gotta have one. The DOT or the MLT officer, they will ask for this if you're running the e -log. So just be aware of that. Schedule one, yeah. Okay, there should be one in your permit binders. Uh, we can give you extra ones too. You can go get some with the log department if you, if you need an extra one, that kind of thing. They're always there, they're available. Okay. Yep. Just make sure um, when you check your schedule one that you currently have, See in the bottom here, it says 2019 version. Please make sure that's the version you have. Yeah, because that's changed one wording one. on it. Right. That is correct. <laughs> so check that if you don't have the one that says 2019 version, grab a copy before you leave. Yeah, we just had new ones printed up, so everybody should be getting one. Yeah, we, I can even grab some before at the end to make sure everybody's got them. Uh, Post-trip inspections, okay, you're required by law uh, uh, to post-trip your equipment at the end of your shift, okay? Um, it says here, since e-logs records all duty status changes, no matter how long they are, your post trip must be logged as on duty time. Okay, so there isn't a specific macro that you're going to do for your post trip, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a note that you're going to put in on your logs on your line four, stating that you're doing a pro post trip. Now, how much time should they be doing for a post trip, Maria? What do you think? Really? I always put five. Yeah, and again, our policy is long enough to do it. So. Long as you do it, okay? So however long it takes is how long you should be logging it for, okay? All right? So okay. I told you that you have to have, that your pre-trip, you have to have a minimum of 15 minutes on it? Well, pre-trips are a bit different. We need 
need to have at least a minimum of 10 minutes for one piece of equipment or 15 for a combination, correct? Oh, yeah. okay. okay. I thought it was 15 minutes. But you're supposed to log it as you do it. That's right. <laughs> okay. But again, you don't want to be logging less than that. It should, listen, we all know it should not take you five minutes to do a pre trip on a truck. I don't care how fast or good you think you are. That's just not acceptable, right? So, again, but, uh, log it as you do it. All right. Okay. So, uh, some more on pre trip inspections. Um, in order for your pre-trip to be considered valid, you must have on-duty time. So your pre-trips are always online for on-duty, okay? And you have to have your macro 37 recorded and done correctly, all right? I can't stress that enough. Uh, if the log department matches that with your logs, you got to fill those out. Every time you hook to a new piece of equipment, you got to do a macro 37, okay? All right? Well, so every trailer. Every, every trailer, every, every piece of equipment, you always got to do one, right? Okay. Um, Pre-trips are valid for 24 hours, okay, so we all know that usually every time you go get off of your 10-hour uh, your break, you want to do another pre-trip for your mm -hmm. tractor, okay? Again, same with the trailers. If you're hooked to a trailer, you got to do one, uh, but anytime you're hooking to new equipment, all right? Um, macro 37, okay, so when you guys send any macro, it's going to be stored in your outbox, all right? So if you get stopped at a scale and an MTO or DOT officer say, I want to see your pre-trip, this is where you're going, to, you're going to pull up your outbox, find your macro 37 and show it, okay? Not only is it going to have all the information that you filled out in the time and date, but it'll also have a timestamp of the time that you sent that macro in, all right? And it's proof that you did your pre-trip. If you didn't do your macro 37, you didn't do your pre-trip. Even if you physically did it, you don't have a record of it, it doesn't consider that it's done. It's like you never did one. So it's a big violation, all right? I mean, can you imagine, right? Not having a pre-trip yeah, done. but how do you get, how, how, does it, how do you show it? In your outbox. It's in a little pop-up. You've got your inbox and your outbox. All your messages in your outbox are everything that you've sent. So it'll be there. Oh, okay, so you go right out to inbox. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, if an officer needs copies, faxed, or emailed, you can request them by filling out a macro 39 as well. Okay, so macro 39 will actually give you uh, pre-trips, right? So, okay, all right. So your macro 38 is right? Uh, so how does that work, Adam? Does it, does it forward here and then they just send it down to the scale house? No, or? no. Automatic. right to the scale house. Right to the oh, scale. the machine just does it. Oh, okay. So yeah, again, just as a re What's, just as a recap, you must have a valid pre-trip on every new uh, trailer that you pick up, okay? So your Macro 37. As a Canadian driver, you must fill out Macro 37 daily, even when driving in the U.S., okay? Uh, macro 32 is for U.S. drivers. What's Macro 32? Is that the... Uh, That's the pre and post. That's pre and post, post. But okay. it's, all, it, it's only for the American drivers. Only for, for US, the US drivers. drivers. So the big thing to take away from this, guys, is your Macro 37. That's the one that you want to use, okay? We don't want to do the post-trip one for U.S. drivers or anything. Uh, if you fill out your macro 37 incorrectly and it bounces back to you, okay, there can be a variety of reasons why this happens. I've had it happen to me. I put in the wrong date, or you, you, you know, you put in your wrong driver ID or something. The message will come back to you and say, you know, you're not the driver assigned to this truck or any any message like that. You need to go back and fill out another one as soon as possible. Okay? It's happened to me as well. Yeah, and you don't want to do it. You know, the next time you stop, find a safe place, stop, and, and get it done. Okay, because again. If that macro 37 isn't filled out correctly, it doesn't count. You didn't do a pre-trip. So again, if you get stopped by an officer and they ask for it, you're not going to have it. You're going to be in, in, in hot water. Okay, so make sure that if you get that message where it bounces back to pull over uh, when it's safe to do so and, uh, and fill out a new one. Make sure it's done correctly. Just the, base, the best piece of advice I can give with doing your macro 37, take your time when you're doing it. Okay, it is a long macro, but make sure that you got everything filled out correctly because if you take a little extra time to fill it out correctly, it saves you the time for having to stop and pull over and redo it again. Okay. But that hub one screws it. Well, screws me. <laughs> we'll talk about that. A little bit. Okay. So, just as a review, this is what our pre-trip macro looks like. Our 37. So you've got your name, your ID, uh, time and date, location. Okay, your tractor number. Uh, your odometer will automatically be uh, filled in from the truck CCM, so that you won't even have to put anything in there. You always want to put in your tractor plate, your jurisdiction, right? All of our tractors are plated Ontario, so that'll always be an ON. Uh, when it comes to your trailer, again, your trailer number, this ODOM is for odometer. We still have some trailers kicking around in the fleet that have the old wheel hubs on them that actually have a speedometer right on them. So if you come across something like that, just fill that mileage in. But generally speaking, most of our trailers do not. So you're just going to throw in uh, two zeros in there just to say that 
you know, there's no odometer, all right? Okay. What does the odometer on the trailer look like? Because I've actually never seen one. It's basically, it'll be right on the wheel hub, uh, uh, hub on, on the, the trailer yeah. wheels. It yeah. just looks like a little odometer inside the hub. Yeah. It's okay. just like a black circle. Honestly, I would say 95% of the fleet doesn't have one. There's maybe 5% kicking around that do, so. I don't think I've seen one. Yeah, yeah, the, the older ones, <laughs> that's right. Um, so one other thing just to mention here, you want to put your tractor, uh, our trailer plate number and the jurisdiction as well. Most of our trailers are plated in Indiana, but we do have some, uh, some of the Osbournes, um, you know, other companies that we've purchased that are now ours. We've got some Oklahomas, some Floridas. So just be aware of that. Make sure it's not always going to be Indiana. You want to make sure you got the right jurisdiction in there. Okay. Again, this all comes down to filling this out properly. Again, it's not even uh, if you get stopped, an MOT or a DOT officer is looking and cross-referencing stuff. This stuff has got to be correct. It's very, very important. Okay. Protect your license. You know, protect uh, our CVR, your CVR, that kind of thing. This is all. It's all reasons why this has to be done correctly. Now you'll notice here that we've got chassis and dolly, okay, and trailer too. Uh, you guys will never fill this out, all right? Chassis dolly is for our container unit, okay, because they have uh, the box and the, the chassis are considered two different things, right? Two different pieces of equipment with different plates and numbers. Uh, but again, that is utilized for that fleet only, okay? I don't think we have any of uh, any of them here today. And your trailer too, again, this is utilized for uh, LCVs, which I don't think we do any of that anymore. So um, again, basically, you're just going to be focusing on the Tractor and trailer portion, okay? Um, make so, sure that the time that you key in there is eastern, not where you are. Like if you're, yeah, if you're in Alberta, don't put Mountain Time. We're running by Eastern. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point to call. We got some guys that are based in BC or Alberta or yeah. Winnipeg, and they'll put, oh, well, it's just 9 o'clock in Winnipeg. No, it's 10 o'clock. Yeah. Consider this macro part of your hours of service party reading. Right. It's always going to be in Eastern time. Uh, just scrolling down a bit, this is where your Schedule 1 will come into play. So you can see we've got our tractor and trailer major and minor defects. Okay, so typically when you do a pre trip and everything looks good, uh, you will just put an N and an N here for there are no defects. But if you do find a defect, you want to put a Y in there and then you're going to refer to your Schedule 1 and put in your number. Okay? So if it were the tractor, let's say it was, uh, I don't know, 18.3M, okay, you would put that in there. And then down here in the remarks section, what I always did is a good, good policy is to write down a description of whatever the defect is, okay? So if it's a flat tire on your tractor, let's say I put uh, right steer on tractor, flat, waiting for repair, okay? You want to put that detail in there. If everything looks good, all right, and you certify at the end here that you've declared that everything looks good, you're going to put a yes in here saying everything is, my pre trip is done. If everything looks good, you don't have to put any remarks in here, right, typically. You just want to leave that blank, okay? The only time you're going to utilize these remarks is if there's something wrong, you're just explaining a defect. The more information, the better, okay? All right, um, okay, so let's get to talking about this law request. If you are stopped at a scale in the U.S. or Canada, an MOT, DOT officer requests to see your logs, okay? This is very, very important. What you want to do if you're in Canada, it's going to be uh, your cycle one tab. If you're on US hours, it's going to say eight day. Okay, and I'll show you an example that we go to the next slide. But essentially, it's going to look like this. It's a two step process to get your logs delivered to the officer. Okay, what you want to do is you want to tap on this log request button first. Picture this as a big refresh key. Okay, and then essentially, what it's doing is it's sending your most current logs to your machine so that the officer can get an updated copy. Okay, so just a, an example here, you'll see it says eight days up here. This would be somebody on DOT, which would be your US logs. This would be on Canada, cycle one. The next step that you want to do is your fax or email. All right, and this is how you're going to get those logs to the <coughs> Okay, so when you tap your fax and email, what's going to happen is a message like this is going to pop up. Okay, you'll see here you'll have the option of putting in a fax number. You'll have an option to actually even put the officer's name in there if you want to. Okay, if he gives you his name, you can have an email to them. The most critical por por portion of this uh, law request is this part here, your region, okay? Now, typically it should default to whatever region you're in, okay? That's how the system is set up, but again, you always wanna double check. You do not want to send a US DOT officer your Canadian logs, okay? Or vice versa, a Canadian officer your DOT logs, okay? Uh, for example, if you send your Canadian logs to a US DOT officer, he's going to get 14 days of logs, which is legally required in Canada. 
okay? And he's gonna be wondering why you're sending them all this stuff, because in the US, we know they're only required to go back eight days. Yeah. All right, now if he gets those 14 days, best be sure he's gonna be going through them too, okay? Because you've now offered them up to them, he can scrutinize them, okay? So always just be careful. You can actually tap on this and change it to whatever region you're in. So if you for somehow, maybe you just crossed the border, you forgot to switch your hours over, you get stopped at the first scale, Double check, make sure, you want to make sure that this is correct. I can't stress how important that is, okay? So you'll see here in this example, you can actually click on this here and it'll give you the option. Note here, you'll see the Canada North. Don't ever go on Canada North, okay? That's not something that we use here. Again, that would be uh, uh, far north, right? Like, far north, territory. You've gone and all We're talking like ice road truckers, right? Now, <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. so once you filled all this information, everything is correct, your region is correct, okay? You want to hit that request button, right? If this does not work, if the officer comes back, knocks on your window, says, hey, I don't have your logs yet, yet, like, what's going on? Call your dispatcher right away, okay? Don't call them, don't do anything, just get on the horn, give them a call, and uh, they'll fax directly from here or rocks or wherever, okay? All right, but again, you don't want to keep these guys waiting, all right? So don't, don't call them and wait for a message back. Get somebody on the phone. Paper logs. Okay, so this is something else we want to review and just quickly talk about. Um, if you ever do encounter a sensor failure, right? I'm sure some of you guys have encountered this before, where you'll be driving along and all of a sudden your Qualcomm says, uh, sensor failure has occurred, switch to paper logs. Okay, it does happen. Um, what you need to do is you need to uh, pull over and actually start your paper log. Now I will say when it comes to uh, this sensor failure, be careful with this one. When a sensor failure happens, I don't know if, if calling or like. I always waited a couple minutes until. Okay, um, so. Kind. Yeah, sometimes what will happen is. Sometimes uh, it's just the location, so it's recording, but it's not okay. moving you location wise. Yeah. But That's what it happens to me, right? Still to do a paper log so that we can update where you are. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, like you don't want to pull over right away and start ranting, like writing frantically, and it's from when the sensor failure occurs, correct, right? You don't want to backtrack, you just want to start from where the, the sensor failure occurs, okay? But again, give it, give it a little bit of time before you pull over, because a lot of times, if there's a system update or something, it will come back relatively quickly, I would assume, so, um, so yeah, just, just be careful with that. But again, like I said, uh, if, if it is down for a long period of time, uh, it's very important that you contact the log department, you contact your dispatcher, okay, let everybody know what's going on. Legally, we have to have that truck fixed within seven days of that failure, okay? We can't be running paper logs for two or three weeks, so if it is a true failure and something like this happens, we're gonna get you rooted somewhere to get that fixed right away, okay? Because it's a big violation for us if we go over that seven days. It's not something that we're gonna, you know, put off or take lightly. We don't want you running on paper logs. But again, sometimes you have to, but it's a last resort. And that is really the only time you should be running on paper logs, correct? There should be no other time that you are running on paper logs. Always, always should be using the Qualcomm unless the Qualcomm actually tells you there's a sensor failure and it's not recording. It's just problem. a backup. Okay, right. One other thing, getting back to the whole downloading your logs onto your USB key and that thing. So your logs are stored every uh, or four or six months. So every 197th day they are purged, okay? So you wanna make sure that you log into the driver portal, get those uh, logs downloaded, okay? You can look, download them onto a USB key, you can print them off. There's multiple ways you can do it, but you really wanna make sure that you have them for your taxes, okay? All right, so and you wanna keep those for at least seven years. All right, that's very, very important. Right, 10, okay, yeah. for if, you, if, if, that's, uh, if that pertains to you, okay. All right, um, approving your logs. Okay, this is another one that we should talk about, right? right. It's our company policy that you approve your logs every day, right? Every 24 hours, you've got to approve your logs, okay? Uh, so once a day. All right, so it says before approving, review your logs. Make sure the data is correct before you hit approve because once you hit approve or certify, that's it. You're not gonna be able to go and, uh, and back and edit or do anything like that, all right? So make sure that everything is on the up and up and looks good, okay? You have the ability to edit the off-duty, sleeper berth, and on time, or on duty times only, all right? No drive time, that includes off-duty personal use, which we talked about earlier, okay? All right, so, um, 
says here only changes to driving time that are legal will be made by the law department. Okay, so I you changed your status of driving, but the truck did not move. Okay, that's the only time, the absolute only time that drive time could be edited. So what we mean by that is, is that the truck actually didn't move. You sat in your seat, you changed it to drive by mistake, and then went off. All right, if the truck is even moved, even a couple inches, you can't can't edit it. All right, it's 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 against the law. All right, it's not uh, it's not because they don't want to or anything like that. Or there's it's literally just against the law, okay? The, the newer one will let you put them on driving. Okay. Yeah, so there's less chance of that happening. Okay, so the new system that the gives... The new system is yourself on driving. Okay, so for you guys with the newer system in the trucks, like Len, like your, your truck, you actually won't be able to do that, so that should never be an issue. Um, okay, so service portal. I'm going to actually just log in real quick and show you guys how to log on to the service portal if you've never done this before. Okay, it's, uh, it's fairly simple. I'll just pull this up here real quick. So if you guys haven't logged into this before, I mean, you should have at some point. Basically, you're just going to take your, uh, your driver ID, okay, and you're going to log in this way. So. Oh, I remember my question. If you forgot to write <coughs> what time you started that, could you call the log department? Yes. Okay. So you'll see up here, when you go onto our website, hymen.ca, right, you're going to log into the driver portal up here at the top, okay? All right. And uh, this is your driver ID, okay, this is my driver ID here, and your password. Your password typically be the same that uh, you use to log into your truck. And actually, when you register on the website for the first time, you can change your password for uh, the driver portal if you want. Not for your truck, but just for, for this section here. Okay, so we'll hit log in. Okay. And you'll see up here, okay, so there's my name. Uh, you've got my info up here, all right? If you scroll down here, you'll see if there's a section that says Qualcomm e-logs, right? Very simple. Okay, you just click on that. This will work. Okay, your company name is going to be Celadon Trucking. And you continue. Okay, your driver ID. Okay. Your password will be the password that you use to log into your truck. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Well, even, even if he doesn't drive anymore, he still there has There we go. Right? I do, yes. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So you'll see this is what's going to pop up here, right? And it'll actually give you your current status. Okay, so right now I'm marked duty. Uh, it gives me a summary of my hours. But what you want to do is you want to go up to your reports tab up here. Okay. All right. And you can see here you can select a date range. Okay. All right. So let's just say even if we did from the first of February until today the fourth, right? Okay. And then you can just hit uh, run. And you see you can do your log format here. Now we should be um, selecting Canada all the time. Right? You always want to download your Canada ones for uh, tax purposes, right? So we'll hit run the report. So you're saying the company doesn't give you a T4 at the end of the year? Yeah. No, you do get a T4. This is just to keep cops your logs. So you see here, here's my logs, right? So you can see a lot of it is off duty. I do have some uh, some on duty stuff from some road tests I did, but I mean other than that, like this, <clears throat> this is what you're going to download. And you can see here this little arrow, right? You can uh, you can download it. Okay, I typically I would name the the file as the date range, right? Just say May uh, or let's say whatever it was in March or February, uh, 2019, that kind of thing. And you can just save those on a USB key and they're there for you. Okay, all right. But it's really that simple. Again, if you have trouble doing this. Um, you can come down and see me. You can go up and see Naria and Colleen. They'll be able to help you with this. Okay? What's this for? It's on your name. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. It says you're here. Okay. It used to. It gets pretty complicated. Right? Um, I want to mention one thing about logging out. Okay, we always say always log out of your truck. If the truck is going in for maintenance, if you're leaving the truck here at the terminal over, you know, for a reset, anything like that, make sure that you log out, okay? Because if that truck you <coughs> don't want any of that time assigned to your logs, okay? So that's very, very important. Um, so Typically, you, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. So you just put your uh, USB into the 
No, you do it on a computer like this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Well, you got to have your computer. Yeah. Otherwise, you got to bring it out to them and they can do it for you, right? Right. Um, another thing, too, if you're leaving the truck at terminal for holidays, time off, anything like that, you want to log out, okay? Because, again, if you stay logged in and that truck is moved, it's going to get assigned to you, right? So it's very, very important to remember that. Do we have any team drivers in here? No? No, no. Yeah? Okay, so we'll just talk real quickly about this. Each team member is responsible for his or her own e-logs, okay? Uh, another few tips that we say, don't use each other's fuel cards, okay? That's very, very important. You can see where the conflict would come into play there. If you're using your partner's fuel card and they're in the bunk, obviously, again, when we match up the logs, it can be uh, considered a false log. Uh, each member of the team is responsible for his or her own pre-trip and post-trip inspections. Again, that's very, very important. That means you got to do your own macro 37s, right, and your own post trips. And uh, always check to make sure that you are the active driver before you start to drive. Sometimes we find guys forget that when they're switching. They may log in or whatever, but they forget to change themselves to active. And then, uh, you know, obviously the logs are getting switched around, right? So this is where the problems happen. Uh, you want to watch your duty status when the truck is moving. Okay, that's important. When doing your pickup or deliveries, make sure that the person who's on line four is the one who's actually signing for the bills. Okay, you don't want to have the person in the sleeper berth signing for the bills because, again, that's going to be matched up and it's going to be considered a false law. So always be careful with that. The last thing we'll say when it comes to teams is that when a team splits up temporarily, okay, let's say your, your partner's going on holidays or something like that, that driver needs to log out of that truck. Okay, the only time they're going to stay logged in is if they're in the truck driving with their other driver, but if they're going on holidays or you're splitting up for a while, they've got to log out. They can't be logged in. Okay, very, very important. All right. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, that's all we got. Uh, we're close to our hour mark now, so we've, uh, we've stayed on track, which is good. So I think now is the time when we can start opening up to questions. <laughs>